that'll have to do. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oop, I apologize. Sorry. So I read through the case file, and I just wanted part of this is just to meet you so I can put a face with the, the pleadings that I get and, and uh, know, you know who you are. Uh, in terms of the case, I read through the case, and it appears that where you are at now is there's a motion for judgment on the pleadings that was filed, and that needs to be ruled on. Correct, Your Honor. And uh, you filed a memorandum with your motion. And Mr. Azrati, I don't, am I pronouncing your name correctly? You are, sir. I don't believe you filed a memorandum. Is that... um, a couple things. One, at the time that he responded, we still didn't have a suitable judge okay. on the case because I had said originally that no judge in Montgomery County should be on this case because they are part of the problem. And secondly, um, I think I made all of my points in my original filing, and I'm going to bring this up that no other law that I know of comes with a 250 page handbook for the citizens that are supposed to enforce this law. And that's why I believe it needs to not be a matter of lawyer versus lawyer and legal shenanigans, but of actual a citizen against the state in front of a jury of my peers who are impacted by the actions of the people they elect and pay to serve us. And no disrespect to you, Your Honor, but I think this has gotten way out of hand with what's been going on in Montgomery County in terms of illegal work sessions, um, secret meetings, and this has been going on for over 25 years. And Mr. Peterson and I have already gone round and round once, and I've won that case, but the judge decided to penalize me even though I hired an attorney and not award legal fees. So I don't really have a whole lot of faith in any juror, um, any jurist at this point. And I, that's why I asked for a jury trial and I am ready to proceed. So, I understand that, but from a, from a standpoint of presiding over this case, when there's a motion filed, I understand. judgment on the pleadings, I need to address that. I also understand this is statutory law, and it's not common to ask for a jury. However, the deck is stacked against me. I don't know any citizens other than the Koch brothers who can pull out tens of thousands of dollars to pay for attorneys to fight the people they pay to protect them. And I don't think he has any standing whatsoever in this case because he is paid for, paid by the county prosecutor who sits on the central committee of the Montgomery County Democratic Party who installed for years his patronage job employees as precinct captains so that they could rubber stamp the election of not only his boss, the prosecutor, and the auditor, and the treasurer, etc., but also appoint the people to the boards of elections. Now, I've been a precinct captain for over 12 years, and I've never once been asked to endorse, vote for anybody on a screening committee. I've never been asked to vote for anybody on the endorsement committee, and I've never been asked who we should appoint to the Board of Elections. And that is why the Montgomery County Democratic Party has been told that they have been act operating illegally, and that's his boss. So I don't even think he should be here. He so, is here because of the problems we have. So I assume the reason Mr. Peterson is involved in this case is he's an assistant prosecutor in the prosecuting attorney's office. One of their duties is to represent county offices, and one of the county offices would be the county board of elections. Is that correct, correct? Your Honor? I disagree with that, Your Honor. Okay. And why do you disagree with that? Because in the state of Ohio, the only elected official, we, uh, the only person we elect over elections is the Secretary of State. 
the Secretary of State is the only person elected. Technically, the Board of Elections works for the Secretary of State. Why the county prosecutor is defending this instead of the Secretary of State, I do not know. And frankly, since more than a majority of the people in the state of Ohio are not a member of either party, in fact, they outnumber the member, number of Democrats and the number of Republicans, we have a slight problem that we have a board of elections that's appointed by the two mi minority parties to run our elections in the first place. It is absolutely a travesty to all those Americans, all the people in the state of Ohio, who do not want to be associated with either party to pay to defend partisan party politicians who are in place at the Board of Elections. If they want to defend themselves, it should come out of their party money with their own privately hired attorney. It should not be up to the taxpayers to pay this, this man's bill. Where I am at on the case as I look through the file, Correct. The, the first thing that needs to be addressed, I believe, is the motion for judgment on the pleadings. That is a dispositive motion. If the, if the uh, plaintiff prevails on that, then judgment would be granted and the case would be essentially over. I don't know whether that's appropriate or not, but the first thing for me to do is to deal with the motion for judgment on the pleadings, either to find that it's well taken or to find that it's not well taken and rule on it. And I, so, made, I made that because I'm the plaintiff in this. You just said the plaintiff the motion the plaintiff made. Okay, excuse me. Okay, you I'm are. not a lawyer, but I'm, I'm forced to play one here. And oh, it's and we go into these, these discussions that are above most citizens' layman understanding of the law. And I wanna make sure that we're absolutely clear here. Okay. Okay, so you're saying the state, the state. has decided that this, ha I have no merit and that they should dismiss it based on case law that they're pulling out when they're misquoting the very law that I quoted. And I want that to be clear, and I, before you rule on it, when this man lies in his brief by omission, that's the problem. And we're gonna go right to um, the Ohio Revised Code, what? ORC 121.22, where it clearly says, okay, and I want you to understand this, Every public body by rule shall establish a reasonable method whereby any person may determine the time and place of all regularly scheduled meetings and the time, place, and purpose of all special meetings. Now, he cut it off about the purpose part. The purpose is actually the most important part of that notice. Okay, what is set for hearing today is, is, is essentially a free trial or a status conference. So, I understand that, but I've been through these before with Judge Skelton, and he played games, and next thing you know, didn't allow me to admit any evidence and said I didn't have it, and we never went to court. So I am not going to play that game again. I'm going to get as much on the record as possible to make sure you fully understand that the prosecutor's office has an unjust and illegal position in this because they are protecting their jobs. And they have no business in this protecting the individual parties. You have to understand that. And if we want to get into the nitty gritty of this, there is one thing that is absolutely specified in ORC 121.22, and that is if you're going to go into executive session, you must state the reason for it. And there are four, only four things that you can go into executive session for. You cannot say, we're just going into executive session, which is what they've done on their agenda every time from day one till now. So on that basis alone, you cannot dismiss this case. They violated the law. According to this book, it's up to me to enforce it, not anybody else. I can't get the Secretary of State to enforce it. I can't get the Ohio Attorney General to enforce it. I can't get the prosecutor to enforce it because he's defending it. We don't have an ombudsman or a... Um, officer that we elect to protect the interests of the public. There isn't anybody to help us defend ourselves from the state. And I've given up on people like the ACLU. And I've given up, I've been fighting these fights for a long time. And I know 
this book in ORC 121.22 better than you do, better than he does. And it's badly written because it was written by lawyers instead of by writers. What book is that? This is the Sunshine Book man right. Law Manual that is given. And every public official is forced to take Sunshine classes for three hours. It takes more than three hours to read this thing. And I am going to tell you that the law is poorly written. And if we want to keep going backwards and, go and saying, well, this case or that case dealt with something that was badly written, we're not going to move forward. So if you'd like to dismiss it, that's fine. But if you dismiss it, just be aware, they have broken the law. There is no question that they have broken the law. I can prove that, but I want to prove it to a jury because I think they'll agree with me that the difference between an agenda that's one page that doesn't have any details at all and the agendas of every other public organization that they elect has incredible detail so you know what's actually going to happen in the meeting. This is not the Academy Awards nominations they're running here. This is our elections. And we have every right to know before they meet what they're going to discuss if we are going to be an active participant or speak. And Sir, by the way, the reason I speak at the level I'm speaking is I was in the military and I was taught to speak with a command voice. And also, I don't have microphones on everybody, so I want to make sure my voice is clearly pick it, picked up. Your, your I am not. I am not shouting at you. Your voice is fine. Okay, thank you. So, in presiding over this case, yes, sir. It appears to me the next thing that needs to be done is to rule on the motion for judgment on the pleading because that has to be done before the matter goes to trial. They're saying they're entitled to judgment just on, a, on the consideration of the pleadings that have been filed by you and the pleadings that they have filed. And therefore, I need to rule on that. Your and Honor, I'm not a lawyer. I, this book says I don't have to be a lawyer to do that. So their pleadings better be in plain, simple English explaining their excuses, not based on case law where they're picking and choosing their words. And I've already shown you how they picked and choose their words. They are not to be trusted. And so you are representing yourself, and you understand you have a, I, I was under the impression that you were an attorney. So oh, no. I've never so, been to law school. Okay. I've been, I've been arrested by Mike Turner for symbolic speech in a okay. city commission meeting where he had me arrested and placed in jail. It took two and a half years to resolve, and the settlement was $100,000. Uh, which barely covered my legal expenses because that was my first run-in with the law on these. They were having an illegal secret meeting to discuss ways of eliminating citizen participation. I had a case against the school board where they decided to have, before one of the people even was sworn into office, he was presiding over a meeting to discuss school closures, and they were going to do a bus tour with an a group of individuals of the facilities that wouldn't allow me to go, and I taped it and followed them around, and they said it was not an open meeting. Well, they were not allowed to discuss buildings or anything else. That one got screwed up by Judge Skelton. I have that all on videotape, and I went through that. So I learned there. Then I had a case where a school board member didn't even live in the district. Nobody was willing to do anything until finally he changed his voter registration two years after he'd moved any committed voter fraud because he said his old address was a house he didn't live in. But I, he changed his voter registration on the day of the election and I said if he hasn't um, resigned by noon, I will file a mandamus action even though I didn't have standing and he did resign. That is an embarrassment to this system. Then we move on to, I was in the public library taking photographs legally, 100% legally. I got take, told I had to, was breaking the law and I had to leave and I got called a sex offender. I requested immediately copies of the security tapes that belonged to the library. He defended it and delayed it so that at two year, the two year mark when I had to file the civil case, I still didn't have a complete set of the proper tapes. The judges all worked to protect themselves. I had to file a federal case, which I ended up settling for $40,000, so I could pay my lawyer the $5,000 that Judge Parker denied me. I know what happens in these cases. This book says it is up to the citizens to enforce this law. I deserve 
the right to have a trial and let a jury decide. Because those are the people who this law protects. The way he's reading it, it protects him and the elected officials who have been violating the laws and the appointed ones, too, at the Board of Elections. Well, let me just go. My first, I, first of all, I had to I get that on the record. I wanted to meet the parties. Sure. The attorneys. And you are representing yourself. I am representing the people of Montgomery okay. County who have a right to know what goes on in a Board of Elections meeting before it comes up. This is not the Academy Awards nominations where we keep it secret until the big night. And you, have, you. you have the right to represent yourself. Yes, I do. Uh, it has been my experience over the 31 years. That's that, a bad idea. Yes, I know that. that. That generally the best result occurs when both sides have adequate representation to represent themselves. Trying to find an attorney that will go against the prosecutor in this town or against judges, good luck. The cost of bringing in attorneys from Cincinnati, some of them don't want to even touch this case. Okay. And I have contacted them. Plus, I am not the Koch brothers. So I just wanted to make sure. Yes, I'm fully aware. Okay. But again, this book says heir to openness. That is the rule. Heir to openness. And so, heir to the citizen's rights, not to legal mumbo jumbo. Very clear. And so you will be treated as representing yourself. Thank you. And uh, you're entitled to do that. Uh, if at any time you decide you want to retain an attorney to represent you, you're free to do that. And uh, and obviously, if you're going to, if you decide to do that, you're better off doing it earlier rather than later. Sure thing, sir. Yeah. Um, as I indicated, looking at the docket, the first thing that I need to do, uh, I've acquainted myself with the case, read the complaints, uh, read the answer, read uh, you filed a jury demand, I read that, I read everything, and I read the uh, motion for judgment on the pleadings. The next thing to do then is for me to rule on that, and in order to rule on that, you have the, the right, he has filed a memorandum in support of his motion, you have the right to file a memorandum. In response. In response. Do you want to do that? If you would give me the time to do that, it would be very much appreciated. And how much time do you need? I probably need 14 days. Okay, 14 days is certainly, certainly fine. So today is the fourth. The fourth, and so that would be through the 18th. And I tend to end everything at the end of the week, so we'll say through the 21st, I believe it would be. Okay. 20th. 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 Thank you so much, Your Honor. And I'm not used to this kind of courtesy or respect. I've been told I was one day late, and sorry that ruined the whole case in the past. And then, do you want to file a reply, or do you want to have time to file? We'll a preserve my right, right to file a reply, Your Honor. And, and how long would you like to file? Seven days is fine. Seven days, so that would be through the 27th. Um, do the do counsel want to? have oral argument on that motion, or do you want to wait and see after the pleadings or after the motion and the response is filed? I would stand on my motion, Your Honor. Just stand on your motion. Do you, do you want oral argument after the, uh, after the motion filed now? We're going to have a reply to that motion and then a response to the so to summarize there, that I failed to state a claim pursuant to the Ohio Opens Meeting Act, Your Honor, that's an insult. So you don't have to you don't have to make your argument now. You're going to make your argument in I'll writing. Make, in my response. And, and Do I need oral response. arguments? I don't know. Have you have you had open meetings training in your history as a judge? Open Meetings Act. Have you been Have you been through the training? Do you remember the training? So uh, I went through a training on on open meetings that was put on for the uh, Ohio Council of County officials when I was a, a member of that organization. I have handled cases before me right. dealing with this law, so I'm not. It's not something that I'm not acquainted with. Okay. 
Um, so why don't we do this? After the reply is filed on the, and you'll have, that would it, be will the be 27th. Filed, it will be filed by the 27th. We'll say each side has seven days after that to request oral argument. That sound okay. And that's like, still in front of you only instead of a jury. We're dealing with legal issues now, so it is before me, that is correct. Okay, so the problem I have with that, again, is this is not a law that is to be enforced by law and the courts. It's supposed to be enforced by the people hiring lawyers to do it. There is no fund for us to do this. What they are accomplishing by all these delays of stopping it from going in front of a jury is adding costs. And if you saw how many filings of dribble he put in in the library lawsuit, where he tried to tell me that the video didn't exist when in fact I had video that proved the way they delivered video and they wouldn't let me admit it in court, I am suspect of anything being entrusted to you. I don't trust you or anybody at this point. I trust 12 peers. And I think that's what has to happen. So I, I know you're gonna say different, but I have an example of a video that was delivered by the Dayton Public Library to a police department. And it was nothing like the video they delivered to me. It had time code, which they just lied about and said it didn't exist. I was not allowed to introduce that. I am tired of lawyers saying this is statutory when you are impinging on the rights of the public. You work for the public. They have to have a chance to oversee you on occasion. And in this case, it's an Open Meetings Act public records issue. And we can go statutory or not statutory, but the difference between their agenda and everybody else's agenda is clear as day. And I don't know why I have to keep going through this because he wants to throw every little trick. Rule 12C, Rule 56C. You know, I'm not a lawyer. It says I'm not supposed to have to be a lawyer. You're supposed to err to openness. That is clearly in the rulings. Air to openness, we can skip all this rigmarole and we can go straight to a jury trial tomorrow and I guarantee you a jury will say, these people are jerking the public around. And we don't need to waste time with two more filings and anything else because they will be disgusted with the behavior of this man and his boss and you have a chance to be a champion. So where we are at again. Okay, you want to go to the step. We will no, we'll I, let him I, file. It's not what I want to do. I'm okay. following the correct procedure. So if your concern is, Judge, you shouldn't be deciding this case. You shouldn't decide what the facts are. I don't intend to decide what the facts are. That's why I asked for a jury. Right. And so what they are saying is, taking the facts as they are alleged in the pleadings, taking the pleadings, all of the allegations in the pleadings, they are entitled to judgment as a matter Your of Your Honor, law. they're not entitled to lie. They're not entitled to mislead you by eliminating key words. I sat through a federal trial of somebody charged with cult, in the culture of corruption case. And it was very, they, what they did was they took little snippets of video from their um, undercover agent and he presented only those things to the jury. In his filing that he already made, he made the biggest error possible, leaving out the words and purpose. And for that alone, you should dismiss his entry and say, go back and start again, because I'm not gonna stand for it. And here, here it is. Here's what he wrote at the bottom. Here's what the law says at the top. And just on the basis of that alone, you should say, look, Mr. Peterson, if you're going to sit here and mock me by lying to me in my own courtroom, I'm not going to tolerate it. 
Those two words are everything. And I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything, but I'm sick of the way these people behave. I could bring up some other things that they've done as well. Like, I, got, I had $35,000 embezzled from me and $3,000 from the service disabled veteran I took care of. We went with a pile of evidence into a grand jury room for my case, and we went with a very small stack of evidence in my, the veteran I take care of's case. They found her guilty on three Evan three felonies in his case. Mine, it was no true bill. You can indict a ham sandwich. His boss decided to screw me. I have a $70,000 civil judgment that I can't collect, but his boss is a vindictive jerk who made me pay. And, and that's the kind of court, what I'm facing here. And that's why I'm here fighting for everybody because these people make a mockery of our laws in this county. We don't have judges being challenged ever. They all have life terms. It's like the Supreme Court around here, which makes it very hard to get anything done. It makes it hard to find an attorney. And I, I really ask you to say, we're gonna go straight to a jury and stop wasting everybody's time because he, anything he files, is misconstrued or a lie. And if I have to go and spend my time analyzing every last bit of it, I should get paid. I'm a professional. I keep track of my time for a living. It costs, when I bill clients, it's at least at $150 an hour, and I'm not entitled, according to the laws written by our state, for any reimbursement whatsoever. So all of his, every time he cites a case, he knows it, that I have to waste time responding to it at my own personal cost, or paying an attorney to do it. And that is patently unfair. I believe in the 14th Amendment, which guarantees equal protection. Lawyers are not a privileged class that only should get paid for their time doing this. So every hour I spend in the next 14 days, I'd like to, sum and I, if I prevail, I'd like to submit a bill at $150 an hour, which is a lot less than what what we're, he's costing me as a taxpayer, I'd like to submit that bill and get paid. Now you're gonna say there's no statutory reason for that. I'm gonna say, well, the 14th Amendment says you can't have this, this difference in classes. Are lawyers a privileged class in this country? Actually, what I was gonna say is we're not at the point that we, the, the litigation proceeds in an orderly manner. We are not at the point of deciding attorney fees. We're a long way away from that. Oh, no, no. In, in these cases, attorney fees are only eligible if you hire an attorney. But if you have to service one on your own, you are not entitled to any and, payment and I'm not for your even time. At the point of addressing that because we're okay. at the point now of deciding the the, sta okay. the state is 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 alleging, and I say state is actually the, the uh, board of elections uh, and through their counsel is alleging that taking all of the all the allegations in the complaint and in the pleadings, there is not a material fact at issue and that they are entitled to judgment as a matter of law. They are incorrect. And I and, made that clear and, in my filing and, and, and they say, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I don't know whether they're correct or not. That's the reason that I want, we're setting up this briefing schedule so that you have an opportunity to brief it. The, Board of Elections will have a chance to file a reply. Here, here are our agendas. If, if oral argument is requested, we'll have oral argument, and then I'll rule on that motion. Your Honor, if here you, are our agendas. Okay. By other bodies in the same region, Dayton City Commission, Dayton Public Schools, and the Montgomery County so Commission. Not, not Every Dayton. one of them is five pages or longer and has actual substantive detail. They're, they send out the same agenda so if that every has a time. bearing on your on the on the response you're going to file and attach it to the response great right. I, I will do but, that but it's it is he's a liar and he knows it and he does this on purpose to cost me time and money and I'm t letting you know that this is the not fair that the citizen has to pay for something that the political parties are causing 
he should not be defending them. I made that clear in my original filing, and I should have asked for a ruling on that. Because I don't know why the taxpayers are getting stuck with the bill of the political parties being petty and breaking the law. So you will find that I will listen a lot. <laughs> I'm but, glad. But, but, but Skelton but would have shut me up. <laughs> one, one of the things that I do expect is civility. And civility yes, means you don't call the other side a liar. Well, I have I have proof that he's a liar, well, and I'll bring it in court. That that is not appropriate in, in court. Well, it is when he has lied. Okay. So, but I hear you, and I will I will refrain from calling him that. And so, at this point, I don't think there is anything else to do. We set a schedule, um, and uh, I will put on an order with that schedule. Awesome. And. Uh, schedule begin the time begins now so sure. obviously everybody knows what the dates are I will rule on that motion and then depending on how I rule on that motion we'll set further proceedings from there is there a limit on the number of pages of my response I don't know what the Montgomery County uh, well the problem is all these so, attachments yeah. of real agendas for you to see could run thousands of pages by the time I'm done getting one from every other body in this county. Because that's what I'm going to do. Well, I don't know, filing additional documents, you, what you need to do now is to respond based upon the documents that have been filed. If you think you need to amend your pleading. Well, um, I didn't include the evidence in you, my original you think you need to amend your pleading then now is a, a, an appropriate time to think about that but uh, and if you feel that you need to do that and it will make a difference then you may want to amend your pleadings but I'm, I'm you can't really just put documents in the record and set put attach them to Send them to the judge. Well, you're asking, he's saying that I didn't present anything, any proof of what was going on by ex somehow he can't understand the English language that I used. So I, I guess I need to amend my original pleading to show multiple examples of how a real agenda is done because he has no clue. Well, you'll need that, to decide whether you want to file a motion to amend your pleading side. Well, I'll do that as well as the response to his jabberwocky that he filed, where he omitted words that are key to the law. The purpose part is, is the whole key, right then and there. You could decide on that right now. An agenda that does not have a purpose of what you're actually discussing is not an agenda. It's a schedule. It's like telling us that there's going to be a baseball game. It's going to have nine innings. There are three outs each. It's not even telling you the lineup or who's playing. That's what they're passing off as an agenda. So you're asking me now to make conclusions of, of law, and I'll, I'll do that when I, when I get the responses that you're going to file, and I'll take a look and make it a judgment okay. as a matter of law as well as whether the awesome. pleadings are sufficient to go forward. Well, but again, I'm not going to do that now. Air, air to open this and, and realize that you're supposed to give the public the right to have a little leeway in this. That's what the law says. Okay? So he can cite all he wants. The fact is most people don't fight as hard as I do about things like this. And a lot of people say, what's it matter? It's the Board of Elections. Well, if we don't have fair, honest, and open elections in this, in this country, what are we really doing here? If you ask me, that's one of the highest um, offices in terms of integrity. And we've already had it grossly violated when the FBI and the DOJ let a guy that they already caught accepting bribes not only stay in office, but run for office and win and with an agreement that he would resign two months after he got elected. That was Commissioner Joey D. Williams, who became a police a FBI informant in 2015 and stood for re-election in 2019. We have a real problem here. I am not making this up. 
Mr. Peterson, you've been silent for the most part, so is there anything you wanted to say? No, Your Honor, I appreciate you having the opportunity to talk with us today, and I stand by my motion. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. I really appreciate you being here. So just by way of background, I'm a, a, uh, was a common pleas judge in Claremont County for 27 years. Before that, I was a municipal and a county court judge for four years. So about total, total it up, it's about 30 years and 10 months. Uh, and decided to retire, so I'm here. As a, <laughs> I'm here as an assigned judge in this case, and uh, so I will give it. Uh, I'll do everything that I'm required to do. I hope this keeps you entertained in your retirement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Honor. Thank you.